uh, Arlington Housing Authority annual meeting at 6.50. Um, I'm gonna turn, it's uh, Thursday, April 21st. I'm gonna, turn it, I'm gonna turn it over to John Greco who will run the elections for us. Uh, and, and then after that, we'll go right into our regular meeting. Um, John? Let's do roll call. Oh, I'm sorry, good, good point. Uh, so Fiorella? Here. Nick? Here. Gwen? Here. Gar? Here. And Brian is here, so everybody's here. Go ahead, John. You're muted, bud. You're on mute, John. John, you're on mute. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, we uh, want to have uh, uh, open it. No, we want to have nominations. So, do we want to have anyone move to open nominations for the three offices of chair, vice chair, and treasurer? Does anybody move to open nominations? I move. So move. Open. Uh, move by Nick. Any second? Second. Second by Joanne. All yes. in favor? Aye. 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 Five, five and zero, all in favor. Okay. The first uh, office will be the office of chair, chairperson. Uh, are there any uh, nominations for the office of chairperson? I nominate Brian Connor for chairman. Brian, nominated by Nick. Is there a second? I second. Seconded by Gar. Are there any other nominations for chair? Hearing no other nominations, uh, do we have a motion to close the uh, nominations for chair? No, I, I'd like to hear from the nominee just a few words. Go, go right ahead. Because he's accomplished a lot this year and I think that should be brought up. Good, our... thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Um, uh, first of all, it was, uh, it was an honor to serve as chair for the past year. Um, and um, I would um, welcome the opportunity to continue. I think we did a lot together as a group. It was a, a tremendous year, uh, COVID year, uh, new director, new director of maintenance, uh, multiple changes in staffing, and now we have a new assistant director for operations. So it's, uh, you know, I think uh, yeah, it's really, um, uh, an opportunity for the Arlington Housing Authority to, to really begin again um, and go in a uh, direction, certainly the direction we've gone in is great, uh, but we now have some great leadership and we continue doing that and hopefully we can build upon it. And, you know, I think one of our greatest achievements as a board uh, to agree to start the charitable foundation, even though we didn't see any press on it, but uh, this new uh, charitable foundation really will allow the board, uh, the members of the board to go and um, really do a lot more uh, great things for the tenants and the developments uh, for the social health and well-being of the of our tenants. Um, because as we all know, we don't have a lot of state dollars to spend in those things. And hopefully we'll be able to get some grant funding. Uh, maybe we can even get houses donated to us and condos and so forth and expand our footprint. So I think, um, you know, going forward this year is is an exciting one. And um, um, I welcome the challenge. I, I work very closely with Jack, as we all know, um, during the transition days. And uh, I think we've got a great director. So, so thank you. Uh, thank you for your confidence in the past. And, and thank you for your confidence uh, today. <clears throat> That's satisfactory, Joanne, or do you have anything else on that? No, no, I, I just think that we don't wanna just vote for names, we wanna, you know, know that we're voting for someone who will has done and will continue to do a lot for the housing authority. Okay, hearing no other nominations, uh, do we have a vote to close nominations of chair? So moved. Moved by Nick. Um, seconded. Seconded. Seconded by Joanne. Okay. No, I think okay. nominations for chair. I'm sorry. Say it again. I think Fiorella seconded. I did. Oh, seconded. I'm sorry, Fiorella. Okay, um, we will now open nominations for uh, vice chair. Are there any nominations for vice chair? I nominate God uh, Tulane. I nominate Joanne. Okay, so we have, let's have a second. So the guy is nominated by uh, Nick. Is there a second for that? 
I'll second that one. Seconded by Brian. Okay. Any other nominations for vice chair? Fiorella. I Joanne. Joanne by Fiorella. Is there a second for that? I second it. Seconded by, by Joanne. Okay. Are there any other nominations for vice chair? Okay. Uh, we'll move motion to close uh, nominations for vice chair. No, I think I think we should hear from the candidates. Oh yeah, okay, all right. You want to hear from the candidates? That's good. Um, okay, yeah, I guess uh, Gar was first nominated. Gar, you wish to go ahead? Yeah, I. Uh, so this is my um, give a little history of me on the Arlington Housing Authority. It's uh, I was uh, my first five year term. I was uh, chosen by Governor Deval Patrick to be the uh, state uh, nominee. Um, and then I ran in an election after that for my second five-year term, which I am currently serving. And I think I have about two years left. Um, I think my expertise through the banking field and, uh, you know, we, we, obviously we manage property for the Arlington Housing Authority. Um, much of it is construction and rehabbing property. And I just feel my expertise uh, uh, with construction lending and building is uh, you know, plays well with what we do at Arlington Housing Authority. Um, among, among other things, uh, budgeting, uh, uh, very uh, adept at budgets, and look at numbers all day in the banking world. Um, that's why I feel I am uh, qualified to be vice chair. And I, I guess I should mention over the past, I mean, eight years I have been on the board, um, I have been chairman of before and vice chair and treasurer. Thank you. Joanne, do you wish to make a statement? Oh, yes, I do. Um, I was elected two years ago, overwhelmingly, by the town of Arlington, and I ran on serving the tenants, bringing them closer to the board, forming a working relationship, and bringing in resources. I My first act was to get the tree committee to donate a number of trees and to pay for having them installed in several of the housing sites. I encouraged the gardens, which were already there and got a number of volunteers and donations. I attended all town committee and board meetings that, that were related to the housing authority. Just lately, I went to the, um, the five-year plan, which the first 100, page draft of the five-year plan for affordable housing did not mention the Arlington Housing Authority. So I've been working on that for several months, including going to the select board and uh, writing all the things that needed to be corrected. I was glad to know that some of them have been made um, because the five-year plan will be used in funding decisions. So it's very important to us. I worked with Fiorella, uh, to um, bring Jack Cooper from the Mass Tenants Association to Mononymy Manor so that he could help them form or reform their tenants association. Fiorella and I visited a number of the sites. Um, and let's see. Um, I, what I would like to continue to do is to improve the relationship of the tenants, make them more participatory in the work of the board and vice versa and the staff. And I'm now working on grants. Um, I've already talked to several banks to bring in more resources to the Arlington Housing Authority. And last year I was voted by this committee to be vice chair and I'd like to continue in that position. It would make it more likely I could bring in these resources. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, having heard no uh, other nominees, uh, nominations, uh, and with the assent of all, uh, we'll close nominations and we'll have the election for vice chair. So what we will do is uh, we will uh, ask persons uh, who wants to vote for Gar as vice chair, uh, signify by saying aye and identifying themselves. Any votes for Gar for vice chair? Aye, Nick Mishropoulos. Nick is one. Brian, Brian, is one. Brian. Brian. Brian is two. And Gar Talania. Nick, Brian, and Gar. Okay. 
Okay, just so for the record, uh, there are, are there nomin are there votes for Joanne for vice chair? Aye. Fiorella? And I. Fiorella and Joanne. It appears that there's three votes for uh, for Gar, Nick, Brian, and Gar, and two votes for Joanne, Joanne and Fiorella. And so Nick has three votes and will be the vice chair according to the votes. No, Gar. I'm not Nick. Gar. Gar. Not me. I'm sorry, Gar. I'm sorry. Gar will be the chair according to the votes. Thank you. Okay. Um, anyone want to make uh, nominations or move to uh, nominate anybody for the position of treasurer? Yeah, I'll nominate uh, Nick. Gar nominates Nick. Is there a second from, from Gar's nomination of Nick? I'll second it. Seconded by Brian. Are there any other nominations for uh, treasurer? Hearing no other nominations with the assent of all, uh, we'll close the nomination for nominations for treasurer. Um, any objection at all to that? Okay, we'll close nominations and um, we'll have a vote now for treasurer. All of those who wish to vote for treasurer, please signify, identify themselves and who they wish to vote for. Nick votes for I'll go for through, I'll go through Nick, the roll. Nick? Yes, for Nick, yes. Nick votes for Nick, okay. Gar, Gar will vote for Nick. Gar votes for Nick. Brian. Votes for Nick. Ryan votes for Nick. I abstain. Uh, who's abstain? I'm sorry. Is that Joanne or Fiorella? Right? Joanne. Yeah. Yes. Joanne. Joanne, Joanne abstain. abstain. Okay. Yeah. Any other persons wishing to vote? I, Fiorella, will vote for Nick. Fiorella will vote for Nick. Thank you, Fiorella. Don't we want to hear about the candidate, though? Sure, we can. Absolutely. Go ahead, Nick. Joanne, you didn't ask. <laughs> All right, little little history about me. I've been voted five times by the town of Arlington to be on the Housing Authority. Um, I have an MBA in finance from Babson College. I've been in the business world managing budgets anywhere from five million to 200 million. Um, understand the budgeting process, understanding the expense and profit side of the business. Um, been working with the Housing Authority for 20 years now. And uh, I think I'm the most qualified to be the treasurer of the Arlington Housing Authority. Thank you for your support. And thank you for the nomination, Gar. And thank you to the um, board for voting me in. Thank you, Fiorella. Thank you, Gar. Thank you, Brian. And uh, Joanne, thanks for abstaining for some reason. So, got it. <laughs> so. All right. Thank you, folks. Um, I guess that's it. That should wrap it up. Um, uh, we have a mo do we have a motion to adjourn the annual meeting? So moved. So moved. Second. Was, that, was, was that who, who <laughs> moved that? I'm sorry. I didn't say who, who Brian. moved that. Brian. Brian. Brian moved, Brian moved yeah, Gar, seconded, Gar, by seconded. Gar. seconded by Gar. Yes. Seconded by Gar. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five in the affirmative, none in the negative. Uh, the meeting uh, of the annual meeting uh, is adjourned. And we'll go right into the regular meeting. Okay, thank you, John, for helping us out there. Um, so now we move into the regular meeting. No need for call to order, as we've already done that. Um, a roll call, I mean. So we'll move right into the executive director's report, Jack. Thank you. Um, the ADA bathroom projects at Winslow Towers and Chestnut Manor, as well as the AC project at Winslow Towers are complete. Uh, work is underway in the units affected by the fire at Chestnut Manor. Uh, the bid for the fire alarm system upgrade at the Hauser building has been, reje has been rejected, or we have rejected it uh, due to the low bid coming in well over, the, um, over our budget for the project. I have requested CDBG off-cycle funding to fund this difference so we can rebid the project in accordance with CDBG guidelines and move forward with its completion. Um, an engineer from DHCD has been out to the Hauser building and the Drake Cottages to start the planning process for the electrical panel upgrades and fire alarm system upgrade projects. Uh, the Arlington Housing Authority's funding through uh, town, town of Arlington ARPA was endorsed by the select board last night. 
This includes the $2.5 million in opera funding for the window project of Monotony Manor. Um, I look forward to hearing from uh, Race and Tilly in the town soon just to determine what the next steps are. Uh, to um, uh, updates related to lean, um, APCD has scheduled site visits to determine if there are energy savings and efficiency opportunities at Winslow Towers and the Hauser building. Um, they've already been out to Chestnut Manor regarding this. We look forward to continuing to advocate to lean for our other sites to be scheduled for this too. Um, and I hope to have more updates related to that at, at future meetings. Um, additionally, in regards to the DHCD ARPA, uh, we are waiting for updated information from DHCD related to when and who will get uh, targeted ARPA funding. Uh, we are hopeful that we will be able to receive some of the targeted awards for some of our fire alarm system upgrade and electrical panel upgrade projects. Um, additionally, in, uh, in, um, additionally, as part of the state ARPA, they've indicated that every housing authority in, in, in the state will get an additional year's worth of formula funding. So for the housing, Arlington Housing Authority, they'll be over $900,000, um, which we are excited to get and, um, and anxious to get so we can determine the best use of that funding um, and, and, and move forward. But obviously some of that will be determined on how many targeted awards we get because um, we're de definitely very anxious to get some of those electrical panel upgrades done and fire alarm system upgrades done. Um, so we're hopeful to be able to fund as many projects as possible through opera funding. Um, an upgrade, um, an update on the uh, resident services coordinator and some of the property managers and other staff that are working with uh, tenants, we're working on some different initiatives and, and programs. Um, we hope to have some, some additional updates at, at future meetings. Uh, we want to work with the tenant associations to work through some of these ideas to determine what's um, best, uh, be uh, the best fit for the different developments. Uh, there's a few really great um, opportunities that we're, we think could really work well for the residents and we look forward to sitting down with the tenant associations to, um, to, to look at those. Um, Chris Partridge and Rolly Demers, uh, the Director of Maintenance and the Assistant Director of Maintenance did an excellent job working with Mahams, which is the, um, the state entity or advocacy group for maintenance staff uh, at housing authorities across the state. And they, you know, just to give a little bit of information on them, they, they are the ones that provide a lot of the maintenance training and some of the different conferences um, uh, directly for our maintenance staff. So uh, Chris and, and, and Roly, who are on their board, um, worked with Mahams and was able to bring their first in-person training event um, to the Arlington Housing Authority uh, and over, and this is any training event for Mahams, I think in over two years. Um, and it was well attended and went very well. I believe over 60 Housing Authority management and staff were present, including our own. Um, I, I, know, I don't know if I already mentioned it, but it happened at the Hauser building, uh, which was a really great site. We got a lot of really great feedback from other housing authorities related to the grounds and our building. So it was, um, it was, it was, a, it was a, a positive all around. And, uh, and the training included pest management, procurement, and plumbing, which were, which were all very important items. And, um, and, and, and obviously, our, our maintenance staff and some of our administrative staff were able to attend, which is a, a major benefit. Um, in regards to staff updates, the family self-sufficiency coordinator job has not been filled and we're still receiving applications. And then obviously in a, in a few minutes, we're gonna um, introduce the new assistant executive director. Thank you. Great, any questions for Jack? <clears throat> you wanna introduce the assistant executive director? Yes, let me just, um, I'm gonna promote her. Already have, haven't you? I know. <laughs> Promoted a Zoom. <laughs> While he's doing that, I'll just share that uh, Jack conducted a, a, an exhaustive search, advertised accordingly, um, brought in a bunch of candidates, and then had an interview process uh, that I participated with and the LTO presidents participated with. Um, um, and um, interviewed um, three top three candidates and um, all great, great candidates. And um, I think uh, Ira uh, will be a, a fantastic addition here, but go ahead, Jack. Yeah. Yes, um, we're very excited to bring Myra on board. She has extensive experience at housing authorities, uh, which includes at Boston Housing Authority, Cambridge Housing Authority, and then also in a compliance management company over at Barcan. Um, she's gonna bring extensive knowledge and expertise 
related to not only our programs, but management of our staff. And we're really um, excited to bring her aboard and um, work towards some of our goals and initiatives. And I'll, and I'll let Myra, you know, I'll let you guys talk to Myra and, and um, ask any questions and um, anything that you might have, you know, had related to a resume or anything else. Myra, can you give us the five minute um, speech about yourself and why you chose Arlington? <laughs> Well, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for inviting me to the board meeting. It's a pleasure to meet all of you or to see you again. Um, uh, this is a great opportunity. I'm very excited um, to work alongside Jack with the board, the tenant associations, the residents, and the whole team. And Arlington, um, I embrace diversity, um, affordable housing. I'm very passionate about affordable housing, um, and I just look forward to being of assistance. Um, and helping in any way that I can. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Myra? Welcome, Myra. We're Thank excited you. to have you joining us, man. Yeah, welcome. There's a lot to do, and we're really excited with your background. And Thank uh, you very much. Anything, really we can do, to get anything we can do to help, just let us know. All right? So. Appreciate that. Thank we you very much. Big thing, we expect big things from you, man. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready to roll up my sleeves. <laughs> I'll let you out. <laughs> Way to go. Welcome. Thank so you. I think Jack has got, if Jack uh, didn't have sent out his new uh, corporate shot at some point in time, you see Myra is is in charge of all the operations types things. Uh, as we have Chris in charge of uh, maintenance. Um, I got to get rid of this off my screen. So um, Myra will be in charge of operations and she's got, and her resume is in the packet here. Uh, so as Jack said, tremendous amount of experience in years in the business, both private and public, uh, mostly public. Right. Uh, Cambridge, which runs a, a phenomenal operation, and which is huge. So I think it's a great addition. Uh, and I think she'll be a great help to Jack at taking some things off his plate. Uh, so I, I think we're, we're looking, forward, looking forward to it. So any, uh, any other questions? Okay, let's move on. Number five. So, thank, you. thank you very much, Myra. You know, thank you, Myra. Welcome. Myra, feel free to stay on. Um, so number five, grievance procedure. At the last meeting, we had a discussion about the grievance procedure, and uh, I think Jen thought it was approved. I heard it was approved, but as you said, it wasn't approved, but now it is finally approved. So it's in your packet. It's very interesting. I read through it myself. Jack, do you need to comment on it before we vote? Yes, um, and this is if this is sorry, I, I lost my train of thought. This is for the, the grievance procedure, yep. the yep. revisions. Um, so DHCD um, contacted me, you know, after the last meeting and indicated that there were some revisions they needed to take place uh, for them to approve uh, the grievance procedure. Uh, some of those being in, I think it was part part B, section three, um, which indicates some of the. Um, the except, exceptions to when there shall not be a grievance, and they wanted some additional um, items added in there um, in order for it to be, you know, full accordance with the the regulation. So we we had to add some of those different items, which are now in the grievance procedure. And then additionally, they they had some minor um, verbiage changes. Um, some of the original language that was in there, you know, talked about, um, you know, like a, I think there was still some language related to tape recordings and um, outdated technological. Uh, references, so we updated that to digital recordings and things like that. Great. So we do have to take a formal vote to accept this. Um, That's great. So do we have a motion to accept that? So move. We have a second. Yeah, I, yes, I second. So we have a motion by Nick, second by Gar. Um, all in favor? Uh, voice vote, Gar. Yes. Nick? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. And Joanne? Yes. Okay, the motion carries. So we've now accepted that. And Jack, I'm going to distribute that. It's on the website. Well, it will be on the website. It's it will be on the website, and then we're going to work to distribute it to the residents. Okay. And just one last comment that the number of language, the census data that's in our report here. Um, the language is spoken. Is that just specific to the Arlington Housing Authority, or is that to all housing authorities? So it's a, it's organized on county and municipal levels, um, or in, in or in regional regional municipal levels or town levels. And so what they they asked us to do, what some of the requirements here is, we had to look at. I think it was a four 
they call it like a four tiered approach or four tiered review of yeah. our language needs. And you know, one of them was we had to look at census data, which was relative to Arlington and then relative to the to the region um, that we fall into, which I think is the, the Boston Cambridge area. Um, and then we also had to look at our CHAMP data, which is our application um, platform to see what types of languages are, are needed on there. Um, and then we also had to look at some of our own in, um, internal data that we have. Um, and, and so we used all that data and then determined and then had to determine if any of them, any of the languages exceeded the 5% threshold. If they exceed the 5% threshold, then that, that um, requires us to take some additional actions with languages. However, because um, Spanish is such a widely spoken language in the Commonwealth, and um, that that language is um, is automatically included in that. So, um, you know, certain types of certain types of documents need to be available in Spanish, and, and in, in this document, it indicates how we are going to um, achieve that. You know, many of those documents that it references are already have already been translated by the That's Commonwealth. It. There will be applications or certain types of different procedures. Um, however, we'll, we'll work to try to find ways to make those available if needed. And then but when I, so this, this document here, that's in there, do I read this as that, you know, we have 222 Spanish speaking tenants, 295 French, 50 Creole. Do I read it that way? Or is it more of a county based? No, it's, it's not the Arlington Housing Authority that, so that's, um, so the, the, the census data you're looking at, that total number is, according to the census data, there are 222 people in the town of Arlington that speak Spanish. And there's 30,153 okay. that speak Spanish in, um, in the whole town. If I was wrong, I, I said the region of Cambridge, Boston, but it's Middlesex yeah. County. Yeah. It's, like, it's county data, not regional data. Okay. No, it's quite interesting. And in, in, if you folks haven't read it yet, 506 Chinese speaking, um, 261 Greek. Yeah, the data is pretty interesting. But, um, and, and obviously, you know, not to get off topic, but this is another reason why it's so important uh, for for residents and members of the community to complete their um, yeah. census. Yeah. Joanne, did you have a question on that? Um, this seems very exhaustive, but I know we have, because I met him, at least one resident who's blind. And not that we have to have everything in Braille, but I think there should be be some way of checking to make sure there's someone who can read the documents for them. Usually they have people, family members or uh, neighbors or spouses. In this case, this man has a, has a spouse who reads documents for him. I don't, do, Jack, do you know how many people have um, these vision problems? I, I, have a, I have an idea offhand. I, would, I, I can think of maybe under five in the in the portfolio, um, and, and those individuals are are known by the property managers, especially mm -hmm. ones that don't have a spouse to help them, like in our senior developments. And um, we, you know, we typically make sure, like if we issue out a notice, we'll give them a call or call their family members to ensure that um, they're aware that, say, maybe we have to come in for something, some sort of an inspection or some sort of notice is going out. We just want to make sure that they're um, they're aware. Well, I just saw that Winslow Towers has two tenants that are blind. So, yeah. So. yeah and, it, and, it, and it definitely it could change and it could increase. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to try to um, accommodate those residents wherever we can. And, and, um, and then, so the other part of this language access plan um, that I, it, you know, because we did already have one. And, and the major reason why we need to push forward this is number one, because this does provide a lot of additional information and, and resources and, and methods is how we're going to um, move forward with providing language access for residents and applicants and participants. Um, however, it's also a requirement uh, for DHCD as part of the um, performance management review. Um, this, in addition with the reasonable accommodation policy that you um, approved, maybe not last month, but the month before this, and then we're also going to be working on a uh, um, fair housing marketing uh, plan policy. That's going to be the next one. And um, so I, I Ideally, I'd have that for you for next month, but it is there's a lot of planning that needs to go into that. So hopefully in the next couple of months. So that brings us to the approval of number six, the uh, language access plan. Um, any further comments on that before we take a vote? Simple. 
All right, do we have a motion to approve the language access plan that's in your packet, the policy? I motion to approve LAP. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, second. we have a motion. Motion by Fiorella, second by Nick. Um, all in favor, Gar? Yes. Nick? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Uh, Joanne? Yes. And Brian is a yes. Uh, that's unanimous. Now we go on to number seven, uh, discussion of the SOS heat pump incentive program at Chestnut Manor, Jack. Well, I wanted to add this um, just for discussion uh, because it's in, it's in not necessarily the early stages, but it's early enough that I, I felt like it was um, worthy to bring it to your attention. Then also because the next item on the agenda uh, requires an approval. So I do want to provide some understanding as to why we're going to be doing that revision. And so what we're doing right now is, is part of what I had mentioned earlier with lean and ABCD and this other, um, this entity that they contract out new ecology is that we're working on uh, bringing air source heat pumps um, to Chestnut Manor. Um, the benefit with this is obviously there's gonna be energy savings and it's gonna provide both heat and AC to residents there, but it's also um, not gonna cost the housing authority any money. Um, besides, you know, maintenance costs, which we will, you know, we, we're already working with that with Winslow Towers and we'll have a plan in place as far as you know, some of the different types of things we need to do as far as changing up filters and, and things like that. But it's, um, it's a great opportunity um, to provide a new heating and AC source for the residents at, um, at Chestnut Manor. Um, obviously, it's, it's early enough in the stage where, you know, at some point in the future, I hope, um, pending the, um, what the structural engineer is able to find and what their eventual um, decision is, being ABCD and, and, and lean and, and uh, new ecology and some of the contractors involved, um, then hopefully I can bring an actual agreement to the board uh, for you yep. to review and, and approve. Um, and just, I wanna... just for everybody's benefit, if you don't know what these things are, uh, it'll be a device on the balcony um, with mini splits inside of the, the units, um, one in the main room, probably one in the bedroom, uh, mini splits of those heating systems that are up high on the wall. Um, very, I've got them in a, in a handful of places and um, very simple to use. Um, it's new tech, so it's not electric heat. It does use electricity to, to do it, but um, so that's um, maybe, maybe when we're proposing that, Jack put a picture in here so they can see it just in case or something. Absolutely, but, and, um, and, and what they've quoted us at so far when we've had conversations is they think it would give, give us 20 to 30% um, energy savings. Um, you know, you know, never mind the, the price tag um, that they, they've indicated that this is probably a million dollar project, which won't co cost us any money besides this um, structural engineer evaluation. Great, Joanne. Yeah, um, I just wonder what impact I know it's, well, first I'd like to know what year you think they might be installed at Monotomy Manor, but what impact this would have on um, the cost for heat which the tenants pay for at Mononymy Manor. And, and I, and, and we're, this is it. Yeah, but this, this system is a Chestnut Manor, not Mononymy Manor, right? I thought you said you had. This, this is for Chestnut Manor, uh, but, but we, we, do, we do hope to um, carry this conversation to Mononymy. Um, so okay. we're, we're advocating for other sites to be considered. Yeah, you know, they're, they're in the beginning of their their, their funding cycle. So there is a lot of potential funding available. So we're really, um, we're hoping that we can include as many of our developments for some of the different types of energy efficiency uh, projects that could be on the table. Yeah. So this moves into number eight in terms of, it's in your packet of hiring a structural engineer to evaluate the balconies to ensure that uh, they handle the weight. Actually, there's not a lot of weight in these things, but this is the process we have to go through. So uh, number eight, we need a motion to approve. Um, expand yeah, I have a question on this. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. So I think it's by Al Alaris Architects and Engineers, right? That's the one we're talking about? Yes. Yeah, they provided us the quote that, you know, has given us the, the information we need. To yeah, and it's, is this quote specific to Chestnut Manor or is it all the buildings? Because it seems like it says all the buildings. It's specific to Chestnut Manor. Okay. It just doesn't say that on it. I thought they might say that on it, but it just says um, 
of the existing balconies in Arlington. So that's a lot of balconies. Yeah, it, that is. But it, but it is specific to Chestnut Manor. Okay. Yeah, that's um, kind of makes sense. Yep. Yep. Good pickup. Um, so do we have a motion to approve number eight, the expenditure of $6,500 for the structural engineer? I move to approve the uh, proposal for structural investigation. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion moved by Gar and second by Nick. Um, all in favor, uh, Fiorella? Yes. Gwen? Yes. Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. And Brian is a yes. That motion passes. We moved to number 10, approval of certificate of substantial completion. Oh, number nine, Brian. Brian. I'm sorry, number nine. I'm sorry, thank you. Uh, approval of um, approval of the OWL engineer's design services contract in the amount of 25,800 uh, for Chestnut Manor, the electrical panel upgrades. Um, I know we've talked about this many times, but anything you wanna to add to that, Jack? Yeah, so we're, you know, we're obviously excited to bring this to the board because this is the next step in us um, being able to, to move forward with the, uh, the first electrical panel upgrade that we want to do. Um, so getting this designer approved means they can get to work and, and hopefully we can get this project bid as soon as possible. Yep. So do we yeah, have I, I agree, this can't happen fast enough. Right, yes, absolutely. Um, so do we have a motion to approve? Yeah, I move to approve uh, the work order for electrical panel upgrades. Do we have a second? Okay. Nick, so uh, moved by Gar, second by Nick. Um, all in favor to approve number nine. Bella? Yes. Uh, Joanne? Yes. Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. And Brian is a yes. Now we move on to number 10. Approval of certificate of substantial completion, the fire pump replacement project at Winslow Towers. Um, anything you want to add to it, Jack? Yeah, um, not much to add. Yeah, they, they, it was a pretty, um, pretty easy project. They came in and were able to complete the work in a couple of days and, um, and we're happy with the results. They, they were an easy contractor and design team to work with. Great, now we have to pay them. So, do we have a motion to approve number 10? Yeah, I would move to approve the certificate of substantial completion for rustic fire protection. Do we have a second? A second. So, so we have a motion by Gar, second by Fiorella. All in favor of Fiorella? Yes. And Joanne? Yes. Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. Brian is yes. That's 10. Uh, number 11. Approval of off cycle CDBG funding request for the Hauser Building Fire Alarm System upgrade project. Jack, you want to comment on that? So this is the um, this is the off cycle CDBG funding I referenced earlier. Um, that's going to help us move forward with the uh, Hauser Hauser Building uh, Fire Fire Alarm uh, System upgrade project that we we want to and need to do. Um, we we were short of, you know about three hundred thousand uh, dollars from the low bid. Um, $300,000, $350,000. So I requested $350,000 um, from CDBG. And so we're, we're hopeful that this, you know, that they deem this is a, um, an appropriate project and they're able to fund us so we can move forward. So we need to approve that process. Do we have a motion to, motion to approve? So uh, are we approving the Request. Request to CDBG. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't have the money yet. Hopefully we'll get it, but we have to approve the request. I would move to approve the CDBG re request for the Hauser building. Right. Do we have a second? Second that. So we have it moved by Gar, second by Fiora. All in favor, Gar? Yes. Nick? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Brian a yes, that motion carries. Uh, number 12, the, uh, Jack, the update on the Verizon disconnection of the copper lines at uh, the senior public housing developments. 
and I did want to provide the board an update on this. Um, we've been working, you know, pretty hard uh, with Verizon to try to find a solution here. Um, the unfortunate thing is that Verizon does want the Arlington Housing Authority to incur a significant cost related to asbestos abatement, other abatement in um, in coring and drilling. Um, as a result, we just we couldn't come to a consensus on on them being able to pay or the state being able to, to cover the entirety of it. Um, so, you know, due to the the number of high priority projects the Allenton Housing Authority has, we just we couldn't justify utilizing that money to um, help up um, help Verizon in, in, install uh, FiOS. Uh, we're hopeful, you know, we're keeping the lines of communication open with Verizon. So hopefully, you know, as technology technology improves and other processes improve, um, there will be options to move forward and, and get FiOS into our buildings. Um, obviously, uh, maybe maybe some of you have heard or, or seen. Um, but that Verizon did issue out a disconnection notice to our residents um, as they did previously. We've also issued out a notice to residents indicating the options um, for them related to Astound, which is um, formerly RCN and Xfinity, um, so that they you know, have the reps number so that they can seek out what options they have for that phone service. Um, Astound has also indicated that, is, um, that they'd be willing to come out and do some presentations and um, and meet with residents. So they've already come to Winslow Towers. I believe they might have already come up, come to another resident, another residence yesterday, and they'll be visiting others. And I think they're open to coming back again um, to be on site to help residents and answer questions related to some of the services they provide too. And, and obviously, if Xfinity ends up in a position where they want to do that too, we invite them. Um, and and while Verizon won't be coming into our buildings now with files, we do hope that you know we can come to some sort of a agreement in the future that um, doesn't, you know, incur the housing authority that type of cost. Well, it's important to understand that there are options. There are two other providers that can provide the service. Um, and Jack, you have notified people. I saw a comment that maybe not everybody's been notified. So maybe you want to just double check that. Um, Absolutely. But the, all the residents will be notified that there are other options in town that they can uh, take. Um, so uh, any questions on that? Just a quick question on the copper wiring. Where's the asbestos? Is it in their wiring or is it in the old wiring casing or something? It's, it's, um, it's, when, when I've talked to other housing authorities, not to go off topic, you know, a lot of the ones that have moved forward this, they have low rise units. Um, you know, if this, if this was a request for the cottages or from an autonomy manor, it would be a different story. Uh, but because it is, this request is for, you know, the Hauser building, Chestnut Manor, Cusack Terrace, Winslow Towers. Um, to run the, you know, what they need to up the building and then to core inside the units and go down the halls and core through the, the cement block in those buildings. It's, um, that's where the trouble is. Makes sense. No, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I spoke to the engineer. We went back and forth. You, you know, I couldn't understand why I couldn't just go through the hallways. And then, yeah. But no, they want to go right, right through the top to bottom and go right through the floors and core all the floors. And, you know, this with the, the potential of the tiles and that sort of stuff. So, yeah. You know, I think, and they wanted us to pay for everything. So um, I'm sure in a year or so, they're going to come back and offer to do it. But uh, but at least there are options for the tenants um, to change their phone service. So um, that brings us on to number 13, update on the gardening policy procedures, thoughts and stuff. Jack. So, so what were um, some of the updates on that is we were able to secure um, some additional funding through Arlington Eats, which we're very happy about, very grateful to them for. Um, so we did receive uh, $5,000 from Arlington Eats, which we are current, currently utilizing to, um, to bring rain barrels, um, at least to some extent to Monotomy Manor. I know there's been some mixed reviews, so we're going to definitely look into that and see if that's an appropriate um, option for, for residents that want gardens down there. And work with the residents related to that, but we did want to secure some of them so that we, you know, we could definitely, you know, work to see if it is a, a good option. We also um, are have been building and, and securing uh, raised bed gardens, um, our, our, and so that funding will also help us um, pay for some of the materials um, needed for that. So we're, you know, we're we're doing some taking some steps to, to prepare um, for for gardening, and we're we're you know we're hopeful it's going to be. Um, a good process. And, and you're going to come up with a, a, a policy for this, right? That we have been pretty much uh, standardized. We, we, can, we can look into that and uh, 
and yeah. you know and, and work with the board on that. Yeah, I mean it's um, pretty simple. But Joanne, Joanne, thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that raised gardens aren't always handicap accessible. That even um, we need some for people who need to be in wheelchairs, but we also need them to be at a length that some person with arthritis doesn't, I mean, some raised gardens are only about two feet. That's, that's not enough. If you have back problems, they need to be much higher. No, these so, are the ones that you, and the one that, the ones that, the ones that you, you forwarded. Yeah, you forwarded some designs to them and I forwarded some designs. These gardens will be high enough for wheelchairs to get under. And they'll yeah. be narrow off. Wheelchair ones, the wheelchair pulls in and the garden's around it. It's not just the height, but it's the structure. But there are also people when they get to be 80 and so forth, they have arthritis and they can't. Some raised gardens are just, you know, a foot or two above the ground. Um, that's not high enough for some of our tenants. They need to be higher. In fact, there's one at Drake Village, uh, quite an old one off to the side as you go in on the right that is quite a bit higher. It's uh, almost a, well, I wouldn't say a card table, but it's quite a bit higher. Then people don't have to lean over all the time. No, I, I can assure you that any raised garden that we build is gonna be uh, such that wheelchairs can get underneath them and it'll be high enough so people won't have to know all the way. So Jack and Chris have a, a bunch of designs that I forwarded to them. Um, so they will be, they'll be such that somebody in a wheelchair could participate in this process. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise it's a waste of process. So that's why we went down this track. So. Um, I also would like to say that um, in visiting, taking care of the trees, I found that in, in at least four of the sites, there are tenants who are avid gardeners and are, it's a wonderful activity for them and for the community. And I think it would be important to consult with them about which, not just Chris and Gar and you, but to consult with them about which model to get. I think someone who uses a wheelchair would have a much better idea of which model of the wheelchair accessible ones would work better. I think, uh, I think yeah. we have it. Um, I know at Winslow Towers, as I met them, as some women who take care of all the flowers and everything in there, they, um, I think we should use the resources of our tenants. It actually- well, I, I, think, I think more importantly, you, you forwarded a design to Jack and I that was handicapped accessible, and that's the design they're gonna use. So that's the one that you forwarded. So, I mean, it, it covers all the, all the concerns that you have. So I think uh, I'm not a tenant. It was no, 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 but, time, but it would be good to ask the people in in these buildings what would be. I don't know if we need one at Monotomy Manor. We might, but certainly Kusak Terrace and um, Chestnut Manor have people who have mobility problems. Yeah, and great. They're, they're right great. out there gardening right now. They're easy to find. Ask them or ask the tenant association, if they could ask them what model that the, they would fit them best, because it's too bad to just order things if we don't know. And, and to it, you know we, um, we have worked with the, um, the tenant president at USAC Terrace, um, uh, Mike McGinty, and, and I'd have to confirm with Chris, but we may have worked with some of the other tenant association members, yeah, other good, members good. there too. And, and he's, uh, he's provided great feedback and um, helped us you know, kind of fine tune um, um, a raised bed garden for there. So we, we look forward to, to working with the other tenant associations or residents, um, as, as you indicated. Great. Thank you. Okay. So moving on to 14, um, a complaint concerning outdoor play equipment in, in the common spaces at Monotomy Manor. Um, Fiorella, do you want to add to that? I think you brought it to our attention. Um, what, what do you recommend? Um, I mean, I just wanted to discuss the fact that uh, 
there is just people that work different times during the day and have children of different ages and people dealing with medical problems that we don't all know about. And to assume that all of this uh, property over here wants to make it accessible to children, um, although noble, I think that there's just, it's too biased. And at the end of the day, we do have Thompson School right at the corner over here that have several options for basketball, baseball, uh, the playground on its own. I think that I do know that there's only like one basketball court, I believe. Um, maybe discuss, I don't know how that would work, but maybe discuss with Thompson, like an addition to more basketball courts. Um, but yeah, it just tends to get um, loud, things get destroyed. Um, and there's just like a certain amount of disrespect along with like the noise pollution and property damages. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up. Well, if I remember correctly, we, we did not develop a policy down there for trampolines or things to be put up in the grass area. Is that correct, Jack? No, we, we don't have a specific policy for those types of um, outdoor play for it. We have discussed it before though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, anybody have any thoughts? I mean, I think starting with just um, like, I don't like games and activities should be like kept regulated in a sense, you know, um, avoid setting up courts, avoid setting up trampolines, you know, avoidance of large setups. Um, that are technically in public areas. Well, uh, uh, Eurilla, what's your concern? Um, well, when the gardens come along, there's gonna be a lot of the stepping into the gardens and all of that. Along with that, uh, when people start playing baseball or soccer, they tend to hit walls, windows. Um, if people are walking by, there's that, the, I mean, it happened to me that I have to avoid a, a whole section because there's, kids throwing the ball around and um, doesn't my concern. Promote, doesn't, but doesn't that promote sort of getting the kids together and really enjoying life a little? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand your concern, man. When I was a kid, it was all about playing in the yard, playing in the schoolyard, playing in your backyard. I mean, really it was your backyard. Me. You weren't sharing it with a bunch of people. That's my point. I was, I, that I, this I, is a I, shared that, space. That, that, no, that's incorrect, by the way, because I was playing in someone's backyard that we shared multiple backyards and people were OK. And we were building camaraderie. We were building relationships. We were building teamwork. I just don't understand why you don't promote the young kids getting together to work together, to play together to really understand and build relationships that they well, can maybe there should be a designated area yeah, maybe, where they can and do that. maybe that's the right My spot. My point is again. that there are people that do not have children that work at night and they need to sleep throughout the day. There and are everybody, different everybody, lifestyles in, in, here in and we can't just cater. It's the same thing in any neighborhood. You're okay. People always work different hours. People always had different things they needed to do. It's a neighborhood, Fiorella. You should try to build a neighborhood and a, I think and a that camaraderie there's a way around to do it and without... the kids are the key. I'm telling yeah. you. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead, Joanne. But I, I just don't get it. Sorry, that I've sorry, observed Fiorella, is... I just don't get it when I've... you're trying to distract. I thought I was talking. Yeah, go ahead. that's not, Joanne. What? Oh, hold on a second. Oh, go ahead, Joanne. Go ahead, Joanne. <laughs> well, you didn't let me you didn't let finish. Right. First of all, Joanne, you didn't let me finish. But go ahead. Yeah. Well, well I just wanted to say that there... The, the problem that I've observed down there is just in terms of getting together and come up is there are 15 year olds playing ball and there are four year olds playing with each other and they get it's dangerous. <laughs> it really is dangerous because you can't form a neighborhood group with four year olds and 15 year olds. Why they not? To, why, why not? Joanne? Place out their activities. Why not, so I Joanne? think. That's a concern that I saw. That's that's just a neighbor. That's a typical neighborhood anywhere, Joanne. 
I, I don't get it, but I'll leave it up to you guys, but I just don't get it. I'm just going on record that I don't get it. Well, because any down. neighbor, Joanne, Saturday Joanne morning. I grew up in a neighborhood that had kids from four years old to 18 years old, and we all played together. So I just don't get it. So I'm going on record because I just don't get it. But so it let's say you. like a window gets broken over here sure, because sure. someone's playing baseball or soccer. Absolutely. Is the housing authority going to pay for that or is the tenant going to have to pay for that? I, I don't know. When we broke a window. We well, let's answer out. that question because I think that, that will have a okay. lot to do with that decision. Okay. I'll let, well, let me let me finish. When we broke a window, we figured out how to pay for it. And is it the authorities? I don't know. I'll leave it to Jack. But when we broke someone's na a neighbor's window, mm -hmm. someone figured it out how to pay for it. You know mm -hmm. what we did? We went to work. And I cut lawns to go pay for the window. Mm. That's what I did. But yeah. I'll leave it up to Jack. Maybe it's the authorities' um, responsibility to fix the window. I don't know, Jack. And maybe and maybe we should. If if the kids are playing and something breaks a window, maybe it should be the authorities' uh, responsibility to break the to fix the window. But All right, so let's let's bring it back here for a minute. So I mean, I, I would hate for us to have to adopt a policy that says you can't put anything. <clears throat> It says you can't put anything on the grass or you can't play on the grass. So what if we did this? What if we, uh, as part of our new going forward public participation, as you know, Jack and Chris and so forth are meeting with each LTO president and the, and the boards immediate, not immediately after this, but within days of this meeting. So what if we asked Jack to discuss it with the LTO presidents and the group down there and Fiorella, um, and then you guys work out something. Um, I mean, I like I said, I'd hate to discourage what Nick's trying to build. I'd hate to discourage kids don't play. But, you know, there is a park up the street, but uh, there's got to be some happy medium. I think as a parent, I'd want my kid out front so I could watch my kid and not at the park. But um, but um, let's, what if we, how's that sound? If we let Jack deal with the LTO presidents, Grella, you, you go to that meeting and, and see if you all can work something out. Um, I mean, it's, it's, better than coming up with a policy that says you can't play out front. You know what I mean? Anybody? Yeah, no, that's definitely not what I'm trying to get to. And I completely agree with Nick, the sense of community and children playing mm -hmm. and all of that. But there is a fine ground uh, between just letting this be like a free for all and having a little bit of respect and awareness of this is a shared space. Let's let's yeah. try to respect everyone's space. I understand where Nick's coming from. Absolutely. I grew up in that same way, too. But People, a lot of people do not have discipline and a lot of people do have discipline. Therefore, I grew up knowing that I had to respect other people's spaces. Not a lot of people grew up with that environment either. So I think that's that in world, order to everyone. That's, that's the real world, Fiorella. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I'm highly aware of that. So, all right, so, but that's the real world, Fiorella. Yeah, can you put that on your agenda item for when you, you with the, uh, the LTO presidents down there? Absolutely. Sorry, Fiora. Sorry, Fiora. I just get passionate around. I mean, don't be sorry. You're making a point. I don't understand what you're sorry about. Yeah. No, I, just get passionate. Passionate. I just get passionate around the kids, Fiora. Yeah. So. Great. What did you say? So then let's put it on put on the agenda for next meeting, uh, Jack, and see if this uh, hopefully some resolve and we don't have to come up with some uh, very strict policy. Uh, let's move on to number 15, approval of the minutes for March 16. In your packet, we have a motion. Uh, first of all, are there any changes or additions to the minutes? If not, do we have a motion to approve them? So moved. I second. So a motion by Nick, second by Gar. Um, all in favor, Fiorella? I do not vote for uh, approving the minutes. Um, You're not there? What? Were you not there at the meeting? No, I was at the meeting. It's just like, as I go through the, me the minutes, there's like information that is not put through. Like, I remember at some point at the last meeting, you said, that's not what we're here to talk about when we were discussing um, Abacus Architects. And I made the comment of, well, isn't that what we're here to discuss this stuff? And it seems like what you said was completely taken off, but what I said is still there. So I don't feel like that's an accurate depiction of how the actual conversation went. And that's along with like, the tenant comments too, like there's stuff that was left out with Jen and when Pam ended up coming in at some point, it was just like off. And I just, I don't feel comfortable saying yes to that. So you're, you're free to offer an amendment or, or, or changes to it. Um, Why don't we table it and um, then the omissions can be corrected. Or. Um, 
I don't have a problem with that. So why don't we do this? Why don't you, Fiorella, you work with Jack to identify, and these meetings are recorded, so you can rerun it. You work with Jack to identify any of the omissions uh, that are on there, and um, and then Jack, we could repropose them next week, uh, next month. That sound fair? Anybody have a problem with that? No. Okay. Um, public participation. So uh, LTO presidents online. I had emailed you all last Saturday uh, the new guidelines. So I'll just I'll just paraphrase them here. Um, so going forward, which changing the game a little bit, um, we're going to become a lot more detailed oriented in terms of uh, the facilities. So instead of discussing any building or maintenance or things like that, I, I we don't want to discuss them in these meetings because you're talking to the wrong group here. Um, and more importantly, Jack Jack has certainly agreed to set up meetings with each facility, with the, each LTO president and their board or whoever they wish to invite um, at a meeting following this meeting. So he's already established a, a calendar of meetings. So some people he's meeting with on Friday, some Monday, some Tuesday, so that uh, you will meet every month. That'll be our individual meetings with uh, the executive director, the director of maintenance, as well as uh, Myra, now the assistant director. And he could also bring in Rolly or somebody else he sees fit. Um, so there'll be individual meetings for the sole purpose to discuss maintenance, building issues, other issues yet at your facility. So that's your opportunity to bring them there. And, and truly that's the opportunity where, you know, if we're talking about floor tiles, that, that Jack and Chris are gonna say, okay, let's go right now and show me the issue with the floor tiles or show me the issue with the door, the windows or the playgrounds or whatever. So it's a, it's a great opportunity to address the issues right then and there, come up with an action plan and, and move from there. So I think, that's, um, um, I think that's a good move. So at our board meetings, truly we wanna hear the presidents talk about tenant activities, social activities. What have you done? For the tenants, what are you doing as a group for the tenants' social health and well beings? What is planned? What's um, what's the future? And how can we help you do those things? So that's truly what we want to hear about here. Um, and that goes for the same thing. If anybody in the general public wants to speak, they have to now go to the website. Um, as you saw, the website is an area now where we post our agendas, the Thursdays before the meeting. Um, and then you fill out that particular comment form. It goes to Jack. And then we, um, depending on what you want to comment about, we, we um, um, recognize you to speak. So there's two factors now. So LTO presidents, um, if you, and you don't have to comment, but if you want to comment, we'd like to hear about tenant issues, social health and well-being issues, um, all plant, physical plant maintenance issues, deal with that at your face-to-face -face meetings. And general public, if you wish to comment, you need to fill out that form, um, of which nobody did for this meeting, but, um, and then we would recognize you, uh, depending on the subject matter, of course. So with that said, let's move on to, um, and you got your hand raised? I've got my hand raised. Go ahead, Joanne. Um, I just wanted to say, um, I can see this, there's no utility to bring to us that a window is broken and everything because Jack and the maintenance crew take care of that. Mm. Um, but I do think that tenant president should talk about, um, for instance, a need for a vaccine clinic, if they think that's true. It yeah, that's a social health social and well-being. Activities, but issues, and they also should be, um, Jack's doing a great job. I know he would work on it, but there should be a way that after that, if it's still, has not been resolved, there should be a way that they can talk to people about it, whether it's you or me or someone on the board so that there's always sort of a fallback. Um, in terms of putting it on the web page, I have found out how many, especially in the senior residents, are, they are not adept at using the computer. So then that denies them the opportunity to put this in in advance. Um, and we already, as we already can see on the chat, there are a number of people who are blind and with low vision. 
And with at least my point of view is to try to make it accessible to all the tenants, not just some of them. So um, could they put it, well, they can't do that, but at least on the chat, they can say what the topic is. Well, I think anybody that's on this Zoom call is computer savvy enough to get on the Zoom call. So I, I think that that audience is, is able to do this should they wish to speak. Um, I think any senior person or somebody else that wants to speak could certainly get help from their LTO presidents and or property managers. So I think, I think there's a way of doing that. I mean, it, certainly it's a given. And you know, if the LTO presidents have brought things up in maintenance meetings or face-to-face -face meetings and, and things haven't been done to this satisfaction, absolutely. I think the way to address that is to send an email to myself um, and I'm more than happy to uh, meet with Jack um, and deal with it, uh, bring it to the board if we feel it needs to be brought to the board. So, I mean, there's always a, there's always another opportunity if, if folks think there's a problem there. Same thing with the general with the with the tenants, as you see in the policy. You know, it does say if the tenant doesn't feel their issue has been adequately addressed by the LTO president, or their privacy concerns, they should send an email directly to the applicable AHA staff member who will follow up with you personally. So the, there there are there are means to do that and bring it up. Go ahead. But often in the public comment, people want to address something that's part of the meeting. So they would have to get off of Zoom, get onto the web page, but not, and they have to do it very far in advance. Wouldn't it be better if they just, on the chat or to you, they say, I'm Joanne Preston, I'd like to talk about the garden policy. And then you have the topic and the person. That's right. And that's why the agenda is posted the, the Thursday before. And they would they would fill this out saying, I want to talk about the garden project. So we only discuss what's on the agenda. So if they want to talk about some of the agenda, it's right there in front of them. Um, but they have to, for instance, um, they didn't know that the policy for more access didn't explicitly talk about blind people. So in the chat, we've had a number of people who've put that they know some of the blind people who are there and they might want to talk about that, but it only came up um, in the meeting. That's that's what I'm concerned about. I, well, I, I don't- I, We would have to study the agenda in advance, which often comes out, and I know it's a necessity to do it 48 hours in advance. Then they have to study it and try to guess what issues might be there if they don't see an apparent one. It shuts down um, public participation, which I think is a problem. I, I, think I agree that people ought to have an important topic or something germane anyway to the meeting, but during the meeting, you could come up with that. Well, again, anything discussed at this meeting is on the agenda. So, uh, you know, if, if somebody here uh, for tonight, for instance, because we're just starting this, you know, if you feel you want to present something, then tonight, yeah, put it in the chat. I'll take a look at it. Um, but, you know, anything we're going to discuss is on the agenda and it's there for them to submit if they want to comment on it. We don't go off the agenda uh, officially. So, um, but let's take it a day at a time. Let's see. Let's let's see. And so, Brian, isn't that because of open meeting law? We follow the open meeting laws. That's right. Go so, that's right. So, so, um, so we have to follow the open meeting laws, which obviously we got to post it two days in advance. We're we're going much further than that. We're posting it Thursday before the before the meeting, which is I don't know five days in advance, or maybe longer. I don't know my math, but so we're giving a lot more advance notice. Um, what you saw, Jack, add on was was a, um, you know, a, uh, a, an approval of a, of a building something, um, which really isn't, wasn't germane to, uh, to anybody, I'm sure, objecting to that. Um, so I would say, let's move forward with this and let's see how we go. Um, hopefully we can, uh, we can, I mean, like I said over and over, the LTO presidents um, should welcome this because now you truly have a face-to-face -face meeting once a month 
with the senior management team and and that's the perfect time to show and tell anything you need so well, do we have a precedent at Perry Pillage yet um Jack, am I still there? I lost my camera here. Yeah. yeah, I can still hear you. Yeah. Um, well, I sorry, Jan. What was that last question? Is there a president at uh, Drake Village yet? I don't believe so. I know they're dealing with um, um, what's his name, Jack, to um, come in and speak. So, I think at this present moment, there's no president. Oh. So. Okay, so let's move on to um, LTO residents, and I know Ellen is on, and Ellen is speaking for Chestnut. Ellen? No. Cusack, excuse me, Cusack. Oh, yes. Um, am, I, am I unmuted? There you go. Yep. So, so um, yeah, so, so these changes <laughs> were unfamiliar to me. I didn't know about having to submit anything. Um, Michael McGinty had mentioned that there's going to be a meeting, I think tomorrow morning, I believe, mm. uh, where he's going to raise yeah. some issues. Um, so I don't have anything in particular because I know that he is going to address those issues. I was just kind of responding because right. I'm interested in what's happening. And learning about what's what's going on, um, so I made some comments. Um, you know, I hadn't been aware that you needed to submit way in advance, so um, I was just responding to some of the issues that were raised. But no, uh, no let me, Ellen, let me explain. I, I had emailed my guts. Too bad he didn't forward it to you. Um, well, he said he's going to be participating in this other meeting. So I mean, I'm as so so I regularly do participate in this meeting as because I'm secretary for for the board here at CUSAC but what I'm saying is I didn't realize that other things like separate from what a president or someone on the board might bring up would need to be submitted so this is like this is a, no. a red thing no no you're not understanding so the LTO presidents we want the LTO presidents to tell the board members what's been going on in your facility are there any social programs going on? Are there any activities that you planned that you had done over the past month or are you planning in the future? And how will they be intended? You know, how, you know, social health and well-being type issues. That's what we want. And is there a way that we can help you? Do you, do you need help? So uh, that's what we're looking for the LTO presidents to talk about at these meetings. Yeah. So, so I, for I, you, I are, like there any, are there many programs that have happened over the last month at, at CUSAC? I know you used to have painting and things like that. So are there any things that happened over the last month or that are, are planned for the for the next month? Uh, I know some additional activities have been, you know, added. I know there is a paint night and there is a karaoke activity that's been added. Um, but I guess uh, I'm looking at a well-being in another way, just in terms of the issue of boosters. I mean, you know, boosters is something that has been recommended for the elderly. Um, for, or for people with medical conditions. Um, and so I was wondering if there is going to be anything planned to help make it easier and more likely that residents do get a boost, um, that that would be important. And I also know that in our building, there have been these uh, very loud, <laughs> I guess they're HEPA filters, I'm not quite sure, but um, it's sort of, they just started going blasting and it's, it, it's, it's a little bit disconcerting because I'm not, sh we're not kind of really sure why they're there exactly. Um, and if there is some problem, I know that there was a discussion, for example, about Verizon and the copper lines and asbestos abatement costs and so forth. So it does make me wonder, is there an asbestos issue? Is there, you know, before we clear out the HEPA filter, is there any kind of monitoring about what is in the air? If something is trying to be, you know, uh, filtered what might be in the air that's getting filtered to, to have some so that, help. So that would be a classic that you bring up at your meeting on Friday. I think, I'm not sure, are they scheduled Friday, Jack? That's correct. Yeah, so that's a classic. So the first thing about the vaccine, absolutely, that's a good thing for, to bring up here. So basically you're asking the board, can we try and facilitate a vaccine clinic? And I think the answer is yes, we're gonna look into that. And we'll try and do that. Great, thank uh, you. Second, you know, the, the, the fans in the hallways, bring that up on tomorrow's meeting so they can 
talk directly with the potters to be potters to be. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great. Pam. Good evening. First of all, I will hope everybody had a pleasant Easter. Found lots of eggs, I hope. Um, I have issues, but they really don't pretend we we did have an uh, Italian night here tonight. In fact, Jack, I, if you were in the building, I was going to say, come down and grab something to eat, <laughs> but you weren't here. But that's the first thing we have had that has a gathering since the pandemic started. We had 42 people out of 139. You do the nice. math. Nice. But that's more than I get at a tenant meeting. I get about 25 at a tenant meeting out of 139. Um, I have a lot of issues, but most of them I will bring up with Jack on Tuesday. <laughs> They're not going to like me after the I'll tell you that right now, because there are a lot. I have a couple of um, staff problems, and a lot of them are maintenance. And I agree. It's not that's, that's the perfect uh, opportunity to do that. So. so I will be seeing you Tuesday, Jack, at 2 o'clock. Be Great. prepared. You won't, you're going to want to drink afterwards. <laughs> um is um Jen on Jen on Jack? Yep. I don't yep, I I I yeah. There, okay, there we go. Yep. Jen? Okay, am I muted now? Yep, there you go. Okay, great. Thank you. Um we just want to welcome um Maya Myra Cruz um to the Housing Authority and look forward to working with her. Um, congrats, Brian, on your reappointment, I should say, and thank Gar you. on your appointment. Um, thank you to the Housing Authority for the scavenger hunt today for the children. Um, it was appreciated. Um, we're having a spring egg hunt for the kids uh, 0 to 12 this weekend. Um, we will have about probably, I think, about 1,500 eggs to mm. put around the property for them all to run around and find. So that should be fun. Um, we have um, other things in the pipeline, but um, one of the things that we're pretty set on is having an end of the school year um, kickoff summer cookout for the for the children. Um, this should be exciting and fun. Um, nice. Yeah. So the maintenance survey, it's taking longer than anticipated to come back. Um, and so everything that's back has been tallied and we're just waiting on a bunch of the duplexes. So that's what you will have information as soon as I have the majority Excellent. of them back. Excellent. Um, and yeah. so as far as grievances go, um, the Jack, if you could send me an updated, the revision, the revised grievance, grievance policy, um, yeah. that would be great. Um, and just just to touch on that, all the all grievances that are submitted need to be um, responded to regardless of the issue, whether it's to be grieved or not to be grieved, um, whether it's an issue that is um, grievable. If it's not, I'm, then I'm sure. responded to. Um, and that's according to the policy. And the um, policy that the DC, DHCD goes by as well. Um, and just some food for thought, if we could um, maybe work together and come up with a policy regarding tenant harassment. Um, we're experiencing some problems uh, in an anonymous manner with that. And um, it's it really needs to be handled so that we we have a better better way of, of taking care of these problems before they get out of control, uh, especially since we have children involved and some of them are little. And um, in order for it not to drag on and people to not be at risk of losing their homes that shouldn't be. So. Yep, I know Jack is all over that, <clears throat> that issue, so. Oh. Yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely yeah. more than one situation, but I yeah. think that maybe if we come up with something that would maybe make it easier for you guys to be able to discern what's what situations are valid and what's not, and be able to maybe work through it faster or more efficiently, um, I think it it may just may help. Yeah. yeah, I think feel free to bring that up in your meeting with them. You know, um, feel free to do that. Yep. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Great. Um, Jack, I don't see any other presidents online. Do you? No. No. Okay. Um, 
Okay. Um, that's all we have in the agenda. Uh, we entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Sorry, I was on mute. Second. So moved by Nick, second by Gar. All in favor of Fiorella? Yes. Nick? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Gar? Yes. Uh, and myself, yes. Okay, thank you all. Um, and we'll see you next month. And good luck, Jack. Uh, and thank you for you and Chris and uh, uh, Myra. Welcome on board. And thank you for meeting with the tenant presidents. And I think that's a as I said before, and drilling it at home, I think it's a very positive step for us. So, all right. Good night, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thanks.